his arms will get tired. All right, here we go. We're live. Gary, We're live. give us a little intro. Hey, everybody. I'm Gary Chetkoff from Mountain Jam, uh, the founder. We're going in our 12th year, and this is our security director, Ken. And I thought I'd introduce everybody to Ken because... Uh, you know, we are such a friendly, loving group that I want everyone to see how mellow and easygoing our head of security is and that if they need anything, if I'm not there, Ken will take care of them. <laughs> so say hi, Ken. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, if you have a problem, uh, find one of the event staff, have them call me. I'm more than willing and able to come spend time with you if you have a problem. If there's something you don't understand, if there's uh, a need that you have that we can help you with, here to help you to have a great time. Ken, nice shirt. Thank you. <laughs> he doesn't have the Grateful Dead shirt on now that he usually wears. I know, he's normally got his dead, his dead gear on. <laughs> uh, well, folks, you should post your questions in the comments below. And uh, someone just said, hi, Ken. Um, post your questions. If you have questions about camping, you want to know what to bring, what you can bring in, what you can't bring, uh, that's what Gary and Ken are here for. So let's hear them. Yeah, uh, one of the one of the strange things this year, which we want to just make sure everybody's aware of, is that the good old Department of Health has uh, mandated that tent campers cannot use any kind of flame in their tent facility. So, if you're car camping, you can have a Coleman stove or grill, but if you're tent camping, they're afraid of tents catching on fire and stuff like that. So. We have a designated grilling area where um, you can bring your food and hopefully it'll be a fine communal big fire pit where you can grill all your seared meat and all that stuff uh, that people love so, to consume. No grills in the tent camping area, but you can bring grills into the car camping area, is that yes, right? that is correct. All right. If you're a car camper. Sure. Valerie wants to know that uh, she says she has, has food allergies and if she brings a doctor's note, can she bring her food, some food into the festival? Most certainly. Uh, we don't stop you from bringing any type of food in. Uh, the difference is how you prepare it. If it's all pre-prepared in your Tupperware bowls or whatever, fine, have at it. You know, we sell ice, bring ice chests, keep it cold, not a problem. Elizabeth wants to know, wants to clarify, so no small propane stoves in tent camping. Correct. Yeah, that's true, uh, So you understand there are two teams of, there are actually three teams of people that will be out checking. One is the New York State Department of Health inspectors. Two will be the camp uh, employees camping area team and the roaming security teams. Roaming security teams like the camping teams will ask you to put it away. When we do the vehicle searches and the tent searches, which a lot of you have been through, we will remind you again. Best thing to do is if you have brought it, just leave it in your vehicle. We're not confiscating it, we're not taking it. We will take though your propane that we can't allow it. Jeremy wants to know, maybe Gary, you can answer this. What's the weather looking like for this weekend? It's sunny and beautiful. I just hope it stays like today. Um, but as we always say, first of all, we don't believe in weather forecasts because they're wrong like at least half the time, which what good is the weather forecast? So, uh, but bring, just be prepared for everything. And uh, it's famous, we're famous for all four seasons in the weekend. So just come prepared for cold, hot, rainy, mud, sun, the whole thing. Nick wants to know what is your recommendation for the best route to the festival site from the New York Thruway to avoid traffic jams and checkpoints? Where is uh, he coming from? If you're coming from the north, it's 87, uh, exit 21. Exit 21 if you're coming from the south? If you come from south, exit I would 20. give you, uh, I would actually get off at exit 19 in Kingston and come up towards through Phoenicia. Phoenicia to 214, and that's a secret route way up. Sean wants to know if there are going to be any cops at the security check. At the security check? You mean our security check or do you mean out on the road? Our security check. There will be sheriff's offices in the vicinity of some of the checkpoints, yes. If they're not standing there all day, it's well within the purview for them to be there at any given time. Um, how early can people start lining up for car camping? For car camping? On Thursday? Thursday morning. Um, yeah, people line up early. I mean, we start letting people in around 8 or 9. So, the earlier the better. 
Hi gents, I'm RV Camping. Will some of my friends that do not have RV Camping Pass be able to enter the RV Camping Zone to visit? Absolutely. Yes. Steve, the answer is yes. How early, uh, how early is coffee available? You guys probably don't know the answer. Um, on Thursday, we will open the venue to campers at 5 o'clock. Other than that, uh, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're open for coffee uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, the vendors are open serving coffee. Okay. Shannon is still confused about the, uh, the, the, the uh, camping stove situation. So just to clarify, there is no cooking at tent camping spots. There's only cooking at car camping spots. So if you have a car camping pass for Hunter 1 and 2, you can have a small propane stove. There are details about the size limitations. Everything is on the website. On our folks. website. I suggest you copy out, print out the web, the web page itself, and go through it and understand it. Old school, but, Ken. But yes. basically, <laughs> basically, if you're car camping, yes, you can have a propane, small thing. And if you're not, if you're tent camping, you have to use the grilling station that we set up. So don't bring your cooking gear. Right. But you can bring your food. Chris wants to know if there are any lakes or running streams of water nearby. Yes, there are. There Plenty. are several. What's do we have the Schoharie Creek, which is just down there past the lodge, which is where Michael Franti is going to be doing yoga Correct. on Sunday morning. Everything's uh, within walking distance and less than a half a mile from the center of the learning center. In the grill areas, are we providing stoves or are people bringing their own? In the grill areas, we're providing the charcoal and the big stove, uh, big top for you to grill onto. Okay. So it's a one big fire pit kind of thing. All right, Elizabeth, hopefully that answered your question. Bring bug spray, plenty of it. <laughs> um, here's a good question from the director of the Maine Youth Rock Orchestra, who's Hello. accompanying the Ballroom Thieves on Sunday. What acts are you guys most excited for? I am most ex I'm always excited for the acts that I that haven't been here before. As much as I love the acts, obviously that we bring back every year, like the Avery Brothers and Franti and, and Warren, I'm always excited for the newer stuff. So, so Beck's never been here before. Jason Isbell, Courtney Barnett, um, and Brandy Carlisle. You know, I'm really excited for that. Uh, and Wilco's never been here before, so. That's what I'm excited for, and I think the train thing is going to be cool on Thursday night. So. Ken, how about you? Uh, train. Train. I want to hear them do Zeppelin. All right. You know, I went to high school when Zeppelin was big, so <laughs> I want to hear it. Um, here's a, another good question. I have a mountaintop car camping pass. Can I have people come to my campsite that have a regular camping pass? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. As long as they have a regular camping pass and not a non-camping pass, they can come visit you in the mountaintop car camping area. Um, water. A lot of questions about water. Is water going to be available at a cost? What's the deal with water? Uh, there is... Water stations? Yeah, there are water stations. I think they're free. I'm pretty sure they're free water stations. If not, you might they might be a dollar, but I think it's free. I think no, they are. It's, right. where are, they, are. If they're camping up in the Hunter area, there are free water stations set up like they have been for the past year. Right. Yeah, and in the festival, we have a new water refilling station. So I, I think it's free. I do think it is. Um, all right. Does Mountaintop tent? Does Mountaintop? car camping start filling in cars from towards the stage and work away from the stage or does it start filling in from the back to the front mountain top car camping that would be the car camping experts and that takes me out of the yeah world. we're gonna have to get but I, would, I would say though i would really think they, they do it from the best spots and go out yeah that's so what the, i think we, park, we yeah. technically it's like hunter we park from the bottom working our way up early you come Close you are. Yeah. Later you come for the year We want to benefit the people that are waiting online and come first. Are there going to be cops in the campgrounds? No. No That's cops strictly, in the campgrounds. Strictly uh, paid event staff. The only time you'll see uh, police officers in the campgrounds if they're responding to a situation. Right. Now, I got to say that there could be, if they, they send in undercover cops and don't tell us about it, 
it's, that's they, beyond our scope can, of we control. Can't, we can't keep them from buying a ticket and being undercover. And they don't. I've heard stories about that in the past, but it's not. It doesn't happen a lot, but I can't. I can't say it could never happen. Be smart. <laughs> Uh, Shannon wants to know why Warren isn't here sitting with you answering these questions. I can answer that. <laughs> Warren just spent three days playing at the Capitol Theater of Port Chester with Phil Lesh. She's taking a few days off to recover. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine has a really good question, which is one that I wanted to ask too, and maybe it's a bigger one, but Catherine is asking about the new VIP village. Maybe, Gary, you can uh, kind of point out some stuff over at the new, the new VIP village. We're actually standing right here in where the old one was. Uh, but maybe you could talk a little bit about the new VIP yeah, the area. The new VIP village, which uh, unfortunately you can't see right here, it's kind of where we had the food, some of the food vendors last year, um, where the really good pizza guy was and a whole bunch of food trucks were. In that area, awareness village. where the awareness village was years back too, um, in that flat area, there is a whole big, there's a big tent set up and in front of it is a super VIP area and the pit where people can walk to the front of the stage is there. So the good news is you don't have to go up the mountain back and forth to get to the VIP area. Uh, and uh, you're right near the front of the stage so you can go from the VIP tent right to the front of the stage really easily. The, the only downside is that um, can't see the bands performing from underneath the tent. You actually come out, have to come out of the tent and walk to the front of the stage. So it might be a drag if it's raining out, but we think that the you know the pros and cons really outweighed it, and I think everyone's going to love being really close to the stage. Sean is, asks a great question, which he's probably uh, noticing on our video here that the second stage isn't where it used to be. <laughs> Where is the second stage? Uh, okay, the second stage is on the other side of the main stage. Let's go take a look. There's our second stage. Well, you can see there's our VIP deck. And then right behind the, I mean, sorry, our handicap platform. And then right behind that is our second stage. We've changed the names of the stages too. They used to be east and west, but now that they're flipped, the big one is the mountain stage. And the smaller one is the valley stage. Good question. Uh, Kaivan asking about yoga with Michael Franti. What's the story with yoga with Michael Franti this year? Well, uh, we're going to do it, you know, weather permitting, uh, we're going to do it outside in a really beautiful location right by the stream. So we're actually going to a new place that we've never used in Mountain Jam before. Um, and it is right off of Ski Bowl Drive. And if you're camping, it's really easy to just go across that little street to the other side where the park is and we're gonna do it have a beautiful day right by the stream and, and, and do uh, I think it's about an hour and 15 minutes yep that's Sunday morning at 1030 down by the Schoharie uh, Matt is asking about the Riverside car camping area what time can people arrive and are there any showers in that vicinity people can arrive just like any other time of car camping uh, eight or nine yeah. I don't think there's showers on Riverside. You're gonna have to go to either the near car camping. Right, near car camping would be the closest. Yeah, that would be the Up uh, by uh, Tube Town. Going towards the KMC. Yep, near car camping, Tube Town on... Uh, it's a straight walk, folks. It's really easy yeah, to, quick to walk. navigate to. Um, Joe wants to know why there are not two nights of Mule this year. Uh, you know... Just because we ran out of space, uh, they require, you know, mule needs like three and a half hours. And so um, we had Wilco, we had the Avery Brothers, we had Umphreys. It was just hard to find another three and a half hours block of time. So we just figured um, Warren's going to play a lot throughout the weekend. And that, um, you know, he's certainly showing up Thursday with Umphreys and with Train and that, you know, maybe next year we'll try to get him back, them back to two nights. Um, Damon wants to know what time campers have to leave on Monday. Everybody needs to be off the mountain by 12 p.m. the latest. So you have plenty of time to pack up and leave. You got time to recover in the morning, everybody right. out by, by noon. Too. 
Coffee will be open. <laughs> yes. Um, another good question from Danny Lynn. How late are one day visitors allowed to stay each night? Good question. Uh, till the late night music is over, which is 3 a.m. So if you get 30 minutes past that, you'll be allowed to stay on property. We just That's closed a certain area so we can clean and get it prepped for the next day. Excellent. So by end of music, each night, late night included. But uh, also, watch the shuttle schedules, guys, if you're taking shuttles. Yes. That's important that you watch the shuttle schedules. Yep, we've got the sh shuttle schedules. will be posted down by where the shuttles are, and they're also on our website. Yeah, they run, I believe, to 3.30 is the last shuttle. So you got 30 minutes after the music ends. Sean wants to know what beers are on tap this year. Ironic, because here we are at the new bar. <laughs> Oh shoot, you know, <laughs> I believe, I believe we're using our favorites, which I know for sure is Stella, because that's my favorite. Uh, I think Red Hook Beer, right? Red Hook? I think. And Goose. Goose Island will be back, yep. Yeah. The IPA, and there's one or two, I just can't remember. Also, within the base lodge, you have the in-house bar. Yep. So. Right, yep. Don't forget that. Um, charging stations. Are there cell phone charging stations? That question is from Lindsay. Why Lindsay? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a really good question because we were just talking about that. Um, if there are not, then you just go into the lodge. The beauty of Hunter Mountain is that we have an indoor lodge with um, real bathrooms, by the way. And there's outlets, electrical outlets everywhere. All over the place. So you can just plug in. It's just great. Just please don't do one thing. Don't unplug the ATM machines. <laughs> it takes a long time for them to reboot, and it's a pain in the neck. Uh, what time do you expect music to end on Sunday? Sunday we're going to end early. Um, there's going to be probably around 9, 9.30, the latest. However, if you're staying over, nobody knows this yet. Fresh off, the, fresh off Gary's brain, is uh, whatever's left of it, is every year Jay from Michael Friday's band tells me that he wants to spin music after midnight. So I'm gonna actually try to get him to spin inside of Colonel's Hall and Healy Hall Sunday night. So we're gonna try to make that. All right. Um, let's see. Here's a question from Chris. Why have you faded away from the jam band scene and lean more towards mainstream music? Well, actually, I don't think it's mainstream at all. You know, the bands we have are not mainstream. You know, to me, a lot of them are alt, indie, uh, rock. Uh, so, you know, Jason Isbell, Courtney Barnett, um, uh, you know, Brandy Carlisle are far from mainstream. I think we're just trying to put the best music that fits our music sensibilities and what's a great live act that's really... Uh, improvisational minded and writing really creative lyrics and put themselves out on a limb to create something really interesting from our artistic level. So I think we just expanded the boundaries to, in our minds of what jam band music is. Um, you know, I hear a lot of these bands, you know, Vander Ray Lift is on Jam On. Um, I also think that a lot of the jam band music is, you know, is, is, not in a growing segment in terms of, you know, it's always widespread panic, the Allman Brothers, you know, uh, uh, Mule and Phil Lesh and um, String Cheese Incident and Trey, you know, it's like six bands and they're not always available, you know, and sometimes you want to make it fresh and exciting and I think that um, we've never had people really leave Mountain Jam and say, they didn't enjoy it. They think they say, wow, thanks for opening our minds to introducing us to new stuff that we haven't listened to before. And I think that's what really charges us up is to get these bands that we think deserve to be on the jam band stage in front of mind to you guys and introduce you to them. Uh, Paul has a question. I think we're going to wrap this up soon, but Paul has a question. I'm not sure if you guys know the answer, but where would you suggest camping if only coming for one day and all hotels are filled up? Are there? Do you know, Gary, of any good campgrounds around here? I think there's North, North South Lake. South Lake yeah. There's um, Devil's Tombstone. And 
go to discovergreencounty.gov yes. and scroll through their website. And I believe on there, we had these questions last year, they do show campsites, alternative places. That may help you out. Um, great. Discover Green County, Green County uh, Tourism, our yep. friends, they have a great listing of campgrounds around here. Um, all right, one more question, and it'll be directed to both of you. I want to hear both of your answers. From Nick, what band do you want the most to be at Mountain Jam? I guess we're talking about in the future. What? Uh, we'll start with Ken. What's the one band that you've never seen at Mountain Jam that you really want to? Well, I've been doing this a long time. It's easy to tell you what bands I haven't done as opposed to uh, what bands have played. Mountain Jam, as, as Gary said, you know, it's a place to meet and see different bands. It's a great place to open people's minds. Wilco hasn't played, but Warren's played. So for me, and, and this side of the business, it's anything that's going to pique people's interest. What's the next great band that's coming along? I come from the 60s and 70s, and you know, the people that I grew up with are all in their 70s now, or even older, and are starting to stop touring. So for me, it's more to see who's that next great band, who's going to make a mark whether it's indie whether it's a jam band rock and roll what's gonna what's gonna pique people to come and see them excellent gary what's one you band know, that's never played that you're that you want to get here my wish list is, is you know if i had to get get anybody here it'd be neil young and i i try every year and i but you never know you know we're working on him uh he doesn't plan too far in advance neil so it's hard to book this festival in january and neil but he would be my number one. Now I think like you said that last year and then somebody went out and wrote an article that Neil Young was playing Mountain Jam. So right, exactly. Neil Young is not playing Mountain Jam this year, but Gary would love to have him at some point. Uh, thank you guys for uh, for watching. Should we do this again? Maybe sometime before the before uh, Thursday? Yeah, we could try. Maybe we'll try to do this tomorrow. This was great. Sure. Thank you for all of the uh, questions. We're gonna post the video on our website on YouTube and it'll live on on our Facebook account so if you have any friends who missed it or you missed any part of oh, it wait. check it out and you gotta say thanks to Drew <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll see you on Thursday be safe have a safe trip up folks <laughs>